have been indeed fashioned from our hard work. We have fashioned these gifts to feed our families, to educate our children, to light lights, to clean floors. We offer these gifts up to thee that we have earned, and we share a portion of them with thee, that you might use them in such a way that your name be proclaimed as love, and that people would receive that and some for the first time. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I hear that candy being opened. <laughs> That's what it's for. Um, those of you who um, can remember it, I would like for you to do me a favor, please. When, when I was a kid, and, and with the confirmation class, there were certain things we had to know. No, I, I don't need any more candy. Oh, no, yeah, that's right. Yeah, share that. Oh, please do. I thought you were bringing that for me. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. Uh, there, were, there were certain things that we had to memorize, and uh, this was one of them. So in, instead of uh, me reading from Scripture, I would like for us to share together John 3.16, and that is, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you very much. Now, I have five minutes, and I can put this on 78, and kind of slow it down a little. Whether you know it or not, I think um, Bob Hamill might attest to this, because every Father's Day he occupies this pulpit, but preachers who have been at it a while, over several years, and particularly if they've been in one particular congregation, as I have, they'll tell you that coming up with fresh sermons uh, on Sundays, like Father's Day and Mother's Day or Valentine's Day, those Sundays that you repeat year after year after year, coming up with fresh ideas is not the easiest thing to do. And so originally this week, when I started on this back on Monday, I thought that, that what I was going to do is come up with something creative and something, if you will, fresh and exciting and something that would be different than, than perhaps what you're used to on Valentine's Day sermons, as rare as that is that we do have them. And so what I decided to do, it was very clever, I thought, I was, <laughs> I was very happy with it. Uh, I decided that what I would do is, is use the comedian Jeff Foxworthy uh, as my inspiration. Now, I, I think probably most people have heard of uh, Mr. Foxworthy. He's a very clean uh, comedian, very funny guy, a very fine man. Uh, obviously he is. Well, when he goes through his comedy routine, he ends every evening of comedy. And those of you who haven't seen him, turn on the comedy channel, and you'll, particularly the uh, Blue Collar um, tour. tour yeah. And that's where you'll find him. And some of the other people you don't want to listen to, but Jeff's funny. Anyway, it, he closes his, uh, uh, his uh, routine with, with this. And he goes, you, you might be a redneck if, right? You've heard that. Yeah. You know, yeah. you might be a red. And I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to tell you what he says. But he did have one that was, I thought, kind of funny. And he said, you might be a redneck if your son Dale Jr. No. You might be a redneck. See, this is why I'm not Jeff Fox. <laughs> you might be a redneck if your son Dale Jr., uh, that his name isn't the same as yours, anyway. <laughs> it's funny. You know, well, it is funny. I was going to say funny things like that. It's something like, uh, you, know, uh, you might be uh, a Valentine, you know, if you, and I, that was very creative. And I was going to say something, you might be a Valentine if you don't say a word when your husband forgets to remove the giblet bag inside the turkey before he bakes it. <laughs> I know one minister who did that. 
I was told by my Valentine that that wasn't funny, and to be respectful of the good Reverend McGee and all the people in the church. So following that admonition to be respectful by the woman right now I'm still living with, I said, all right. So I started over. I started over. And I, later in the week, and this is true, I had to go to a meeting. I well, anyway. And I, and I, it doesn't matter. I worked on it late. Uh, I got most of it done about 2 o'clock on Friday, well, Saturday morning, and then blah, blah, blah. So I, I worked on a meditation more serious, but with a similar idea such as, you might know um, what love is. Um, um, if your Valentine gifts that you share with others reflect the following attributes. People want to know what love is, and, and so if you want, here's the suggestion, if you want to know what love is, then see if what you believe love is matches up with these attributes that I'm going to share with you. And most of these attributes are, are I know personally. I have an older friend who has been married about 50 years. He's from town. Around 30 years ago, his wife was diagnosed with uh, muscular dystrophy. No, MS. Take that back. Multiple sclerosis. And for the last 20 years, his beloved has been confined to a wheelchair. And recently, over the last few years, more often than not, she has been bedridden. So in what should have been uh, their golden years, and this guy has money, and what should have been their golden years where they travel to Europe and South America and, and do all sorts of wonderful, wonderful things together with the money that they had saved uh, to, to enjoy this kind of life. Uh, they've had to spend their money differently, and my friend, he is my friend, uh, what he's had to do, and, and gratefully had to do, is uh, in his golden years, he's, re he's bought a van that had to be reconfigured to accommodate his wife so that he could bring her to social functions that, that, um, that she obviously wasn't able to go to previous to that so that she might see and hear and enjoy what her husband is seeing and hearing and enjoying. And they could share together that life. And so Brenda and I were, uh, were with a group of people on Friday night and my friend Joe, uh, his wife is getting progressively worse, so now she's strapped into a wheelchair, into a wheelchair, and she can't move. But my friend Joe uh, cuts her food, mashes her potatoes, and then he feeds her. And then he wipes her radiant face with a uh, napkin, and then he offers her water that she might sip, because that's his valentine. Love is patient. Love is kind. 